that's why I also want to promote extensive reading because it doesn't cost a lot for a child to improve their English, and it's very effective. And I thought, for example, I have a similar case because I just recently came from France, yeah. and I have a very good friend from my entire life who lives there. Mm -hmm. She has a girl. The girl is around six. And the girl does the reading through video games. The girl is completely bilingual. She even writes in Spanish and in French. And I was completely like impressed because she could literally read without much guidance. It was, I was like, wow. Yeah, it's very amazing for mm -hmm. me too because we were learning English by guidance a lot, uh -huh. right? Like yeah. how to study grammar, how to learn arithmetic, vocab. That's how we learn. But basically, for them. How come you just give them books? Like, you know? But actually, that I understand that because I, I learned using the Berlitz method. Mm -hmm. And I never learned grammar. Mm -hmm. But for us, in, our, like, in uh -huh. Taiwan, for our generation, we mm -hmm. learn a lot of grammar, memorize the paragraph, the vocab. We never really, you know, read a book. We only read paragraphs for tests. We mm -hmm. never read for pleasure. Never, never. Yeah. yeah. But how come they, you just give them books? And then, like, uh, continuously increase the level, and then it can just like pick up, pick up, pick up. Which is independent. <laughs> yes, this is so like for me, it's so magical. They don't even need guidance, and then they can become a really because good at reader. At some point, they just do it by themselves. <laughs> right. And I'm lazy to it's teach her easy. after work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, so I was like, why not? Everybody does it. Hello. Today we are in Alin. We are in Dadu Hui Gong Yuan. Then we have a special guest. Hello. Memo. Hello. Memo, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody? Okay, so my name is Guillermo, but you can call me Memo. Um, I am from Colombia. Uh, Ian and I, we are classmates in the PhD program at NGNU. 好，所以 Memo 是我博士班的同学，今天非常荣幸可以邀请他来跟我们一起野餐。然后今天天气超好，所以我们还蛮幸运的。那刚刚大家有听到 Memo 是来自哥伦比亚，那我相信我们很多台湾的朋友们就不太知道哥伦比亚在哪。我们请他等一下介绍一点点。Can you introduce like Colombia a little bit? Like where is it? Oh, okay, so well, Colombia, not Colombia, Colombia, Colombia. Uh -huh. Um, it's in South America. It's the first country in South America. So. Is the only country that have two coasts, one in the Pacific and one in the Caribbean Sea. We are very special for that. Um, the country is quite diverse because we have around seven regions. Uh, I am from the coast, from the Caribbean coast. Um, the country is very beautiful, it's also very touristic. We are very famous because of coffee. Our coffee is one of the best, one of the softest coffees that you can find in the world. And at the same time, we are also famous because we have a lot of cultural uh, products, like for example, Shakira is Colombian. We are really famous with music and also with literature. And I am very proud of that. So this is pretty much my country. We are neighbors with Panama, and Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, and Brazil too. So we have a lot of different things to do and a lot of different things to like visit when we are in the country because Every region is completely different, so yeah, that's pretty much everything about my country. So, there's a very important point. I was talking to Memo, and he asked me what I thought was wrong. It's called Colombia, not Colombia. So, it's C-O-L-O-M-B-I-A, not L-U-M. Okay, so this was when Memo asked me what I thought was wrong. I wanted to share with you. Because Colombia, basically, it's not a country, right? It's not a country. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So with an O, it's one country, so we can learn one lesson. Okay, so we're going to talk with Memo about like, in, like, what inspired you to come to Taiwan. Well, um, during COVID, um, I used to have like an independent business teaching English in Colombia's uh, capital, which is Bogota. I used to live there and I have a very big group of students there. But in COVID, I have to move back to my hometown, which is Cartagena in the coast. Um, I decided to then take the time for that specific situation, which was COVID, to pursue my master's degree. So um, I realized that there were some scholarships here in Taiwan, and I applied. 
by that time it was really attractive because it was the country that handled the best the COVID situation. So I basically escaped from COVID <laughs> coming here. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Uh, then, um, and at the same time, the scholarship was really inclusive because usually when you are in Colombia, the scholarships that the government offers to students are really focused on certain areas, like for example, business or technology or agriculture. But the Taiwanese scholarship in Colombia is special because it's open to pretty much anything that you want to study. And being an English teacher for such a long time, it was my opportunity to finally have like this um, formal academic knowledge that I needed. Then I was here and when I finished my master's, one of my teachers told me like, okay, why don't you stay here and just go for your PhD? And here I am, this is how we met. This is how we met. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Remember, since you have been living in Taiwan for about three years and so, and then uh, what do you think is the most significant difference between Colombia and Taiwan? I think that it has a lot to do with the people. People? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, in Colombia, we tend to be very direct. Oh, okay. um, here, everything is. So, somehow, for me, as a Colombian person, it is very surprising to find that when people want to tell you no, they don't tell you. In Colombia, they will tell you no. Okay. Yeah, but here it is like there are many other ways to tell you no, but they never tell you no directly. Right. So it took me a while to realize uh, okay. and to accommodate to that new situation. That was a very big change for me. Mm -hmm. I still remember one time I was in caution and there was some sort of problem with my easy car. Mm -hmm. And the person somehow told me that I used my easy car in Tainan and it got blocked somehow. So I couldn't use it there. Uh. And the person said, oh, well, how is it? And that's it. And I was like, oh, but, but I need to use the subway. I, 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 I need to go to another place. What can I do? And the person keeps saying, well, is it? but it was like, no, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to help you. So I tell you, well, how is it? so you just go. Go away. Yes. Yeah, go away. <laughs> so funny. That's, oh, okay. that's, that's the, the example that I wanted to tell okay. you. It's kind of like my husband, Aaron, when he says, Hai kui. Actually, he means no. <laughs> yeah, he just doesn't want to hurt other people's feelings. Now, yeah. when my parents ask you, oh, how do you think about it? I say, oh, I could. And I know, and I say, oh, do you want more? I say, no, when he says I could, he means no, he doesn't like it. <laughs> so he doesn't want more. Later, but ahorita come means now, a little bit later, never. Uh -huh. It depends uh, on the people. Yeah, kind of like in Taiwan, in Chinese, we say, they can cut. So they like that. Exactly. So we just try popcorn chicken. How, mm. how do you like it? I really, really like it. Mm. I, it's, it's something that brings me back home because we love fried food. Uh -huh. In my part of the country, in the coast, in the Caribbean coast, mm -hmm. we really, really love fried food. Okay. Everything is deep fried. Actually, I am from Cartagena, and in February, we have the fried food festival. Mm -hmm. I miss that festival, to be honest. Um, so, Popcorn chicken or chi pai, it's for me like, oh, it's fried food. It's fried food. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's actually quite good for me. What, so what is a staple? For example, in my part of the country, uh, we love fried food. Mm -hmm. And there is one particular recipe of fried food, which is called arepa de huevo, uh -huh. which is like a corn meal based uh, fried food. Mm -hmm. And then you fry it once. When it's fried, you take it off. You open it, you add a raw egg, you close it, and you fry it again. Mm -hmm. So that is called... Arepa de huevo. Too difficult. Yeah, try Yeah, which is basically... Try the word. Yeah, arepa de huevo. Arepa de huevo. Yeah, so basically it's like like something fried, like a fried corn pancake mm -hmm. filled with egg. So it's one of the main foods. Yes. Oh, it's, it's, it's part of our culture. In the coast is part of our culture. We also have other kind of fried food, uh -huh. but that is one very famous one. Actually, there is a town called Luaco where they created it and there is even a statue <laughs> for the person selling them and everything. It's, it's something that I actually need a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's one of our staples in, in my area of the country because every area of the country has a specific staple. Mm -hmm. So saying that there is one Colombian staple is not true because there will be for every area, there will be something completely different. Yes.
Yeah, you can imagine it like every every region is a different country with a different accent, mm -hmm. different yeah, food, true. different climate, and we are mm -hmm. actually very different, even physically speaking. Like, for example, uh, I am from the coast. Mm -hmm. My accent is no closely similar, nothing, nothing similar to the, to the people who live in the mountains. Oh, okay. For example. Uh, the food is the same. Uh -huh. The food that we eat in the coast is not going to be similar to the people to the food that people eat in the mountains. Uh, okay. It's yeah. kind of like in Taiwan, people have different accents from north, yep. you know, Taiwan, yep. and then, yeah, yeah, south yeah. too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then also eating habits will be very different too. Exactly. It's like comparing Tainan foods. Yeah, and then Taipei food. Yeah, it's exactly. It's very different. Yeah, it's very different. So it's the same there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you come to Taiwan, you have tried so many kinds of food. What's your favorite? My favorite? Don't judge me. <laughs> I am obsessed with dry noodles. Dry noodles? Yes. Ooh, I like dry noodles too. Yeah, like something it's my simple, favorite. Right? It's very simple. And I love the way that they put like dry onions, uh -huh. like this kind of fried right. onions and on top of it. Meat. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just simple, but it is perfect. So, yeah. it's, it's, it's my way to go. Every time I find it, oh, I love it. <laughs> I also like chicken Maybe rice. Maybe chicken rice. Oh, okay, uh, chicken, okay, chicken rice. rice. So basically we have something like that in Colombia, but it's completely different. Uh -huh. And when I tried it here, I, I, I was thinking, oh, it should be similar. And then it was not, it's but it was, it was good too. Mm -hmm. So I really like that. So you uh, like chicken rice too? Yeah. Ah, so you like something simple. simple yeah, I really meat. like simple things. But yeah, like simple, but at the same time, very flavorful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. I also like uh, fried dumplings. Jinja. Jinja. Yeah. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. I don't like the, I don't like the juicy ones. Juicy ones. Ah, you know, like they're like ones that are like soupy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so no. you like the crispy type. I like the crispy ones. Hey. Yeah, I like the crispy ones a lot. Mm -hmm.